Here is a little video I made in FDL coding using ESIS. In this video, we will be using ESIS 3.24.2. As we will be doing FDL coding, a software token is required and we will be asked for a PIN, either before modifying NCD, or before doing the actual FDL coding. Check ESIS settings and ensure you have set up ESIS data folder. This is usually C colon backslash data or C backslash ESIS data. Click on the EST tab and ensure it is pointing to the correct EST software token, in this case, it is pointing to fxxtoken.est. This is my token which can be used with 3.22.5, 3.23.4 and 3.24.2 and is not version specific. Let's get started. Press the little connect button on the toolbar which looks like a cable with connectors at each end. This should bring up a new window showing all available car series. It's important to select the correct car series. Since I have an F30, I will select F020. F020 is the main series for F020 up to F083. It's important to note not to select the ones that ends with the word underscore direct. In the interface section, choose connection via VIN or VIN. Then press the connect button. Wait until you see the confirmation window stating a successful connection to the car. Go to Expert Mode tab on the left, then click Coding. In this section, you will see Vehicle Order, or more commonly known as FA. Next to that is the Vehicle Profile also known as FP. Under the FA, you will find the SVT. This will contain your ECU tree. And lastly, on the bottom right pane, this section contains different controls. The first thing we will do is to read the FA. On the FA, or vehicle pane, click read button. While tempting at this point, refrain from exploring this for now. Next, on the SVT actual section, press read SVT. This will probe the car for available ECU. After a few seconds, you should see the SVT pane getting populated. At this point, it's important to note that we don't have the coding data just yet. We only have the FA and the SVT. Also, at this point, nothing is saved to the computer yet. Next, we will ask the car for the current coding data in use. To do this, select the top level node, or SVT, then either right click to bring up a context menu where we can select read coding data, or look for the read coding data that became enabled on the bottom right, within the coding box. ESIS will start querying the car and will automatically save these files as NCD and you can find them in the CAF folder under the data folder. Up to and including this point, the software token is not yet needed. We are just reading coding data from the car and token is not required. ESIS will display the result of the operation. Check each item and ensure there was no error. The CAFD icon is also changed to folder icon, indicating it now has information. Now is a good time to save FA. Click the save button within the vehicle order pane. Choose an appropriate name. Next, is to save the SVT. Do this by pressing the save button within the SVT actual box. This is important and has helped me get out of a bind a few times in the not so distant past. The CAF folder contains the coding data, more commonly called as NCD. You can use my NCD CAFD tool to inspect the content of these files. Before you decide to explore these, however, you need to do two things. Number one, back up these files. Number two, back up your backup and place it somewhere else. Put a copy on a USB or flash disk, another hard drive, or burn them to a disk. Do whatever you have to do, but don't skip this part. You'll thank yourself later. Offline coding. 
It is so called offline coding because we are disconnected from the car. We don't have to be connected to change NCD files. Plus, it feels good to not keep the car running idle, helps the environment too. Fair warning, if you are coding your car in the garage, ensure the garage is ventilated well. Open the garage door or lift gate, never let a car run idle in an enclosed area. Hydrogen monoxide kills and it kills fast. Up until this point, we didn't need a token. This is where we need the software token now. You can see the details of the software token by pressing the details button. Again, I am using fxxtoken.est and the token master file. I know that the digital speed can be found in 3000 and is named bc underscore digital underscore v. Kudos to the person who found this, I did not find this myself. You can also use the search box to find the item you are interested with. Most items don't require you to edit the word value, just the actual parameter, in this case the only choice is active and niche active. Select the parameter, right click, and select edit. Choose one of the available options. Again, do not edit the word value. You will notice that the save button on the toolbar is now enabled. Go ahead and press that. You did remember to make a backup, right? Press the green arrow to go back to coding screen. There are two scenarios that could happen. You may have enough time to do a coding in a single session, or get interrupted and have to leave the coding session. If the former, you can go ahead and click the connect button again to connect to the car. Then select the modified CAFD, right click then select code FDL. You can also click the code FDL button on the lower right section, within the coding box. If, for one reason or another, you have to go somewhere, or at this point, your laptop's battery has died and ESIS was closed, here's what you can do to resume or apply your changes. Let's simulate the scene by closing ESIS. Let's start ESIS again. Once ESIS finished loading, go ahead and connect to the car by clicking the connect button, and remember to select the proper main series. We have two options. We can either load our FA file. And also do the same thing to SVT file. Or, we can just read both again. Once done, we will want to just show the CAFD and hide the other items we're not interested in. To do this, go to the SVT filter, and select CAFD from the drop-down list. Notice how the SVT tree is nicer now that the other items are hidden. It's now less confusing. It is important to load the correct NCD. You cannot just select any NCD and expect it to work. You also cannot rename the NCD files. ESIS uses the file name to find the corresponding CAFD file. In this case, ESIS is looking for the file with hex address 760, major version 6, subversion 0, and patch version 20. That is a mouthful but it is very important. Let's load our modified NCD. Select the item, right click, then from the context menu, click new, then FDL. Browse and select, I repeat, select the correct NCD file. Let us double check the file to ensure it is the correct one. Expand, right click, then edit FDL. Enter the pin again and ensure the change you want is there. We don't need to change anything, so just click the return button to go back to expert coding. 
Let's start coding. First thing to do is to activate FA. Either double click on the FA node, or right click on it, then select activate FA. After a short while, you should see the green active text next to FA, signifying that we have successfully activated FA. Select the coding data for COMB or the NCD. Notice the code FDL button is now enabled. Let's take a few moments to learn what we should not be doing. If you select any of the ECU or the main SVT node, you will notice that the code and code default values buttons are now enabled. If you accidentally press the code button, you will lose all changes you did and you end up with a car that acts like it just came out of the dealership. But, if you accidentally press code default values, you may have to call the dealership and ask them to tow your car or take it away on a bed truck and beg them to fix it. So, do not, I repeat, do not press the code default values. As safe as it may sound, it is not. We only want code FDL. Again, there are two ways to do this, both ways involve selecting the CAFD. Right click on it and then select code FDL, or just press the code FDL button. Let's start coding now. Sit back and relax, if you can. I was sweating bullets the first time I did this. It shouldn't take long and we will hear the combi restart. It will give out a light ding sound. Review the result, ensure you don't see any error. Check everything. When you dismiss the window, another window will be displayed showing the final result. You should see text in green. Not red, not orange, green. And there you go. Successful FDL coding using software token by token master. The only file you need for your 3.22.5, 3.23.4, .3 or 3.24.2 and likely, newer versions of ESIS, for all your coding requirement. If you have any question, you can find me in Bimmerfest, F30 Post or BMWCoding.com. Please check out my blog as well at tokenmaster.blogspot.com. Happy and safe coding.